There are a lot of interesting things that you can salvage from a CD-ROM drive. Motors, LEDs, magnets such as these strong ones that I'm playing with right here. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to take apart one such CD-ROM drive and what cool and useful components to look for. Let's begin. This particular CD-ROM drive is an NEC Corporation model CD3010A. We'll begin this assembly by taking the tray out and for that we'll need something thin like a paperclip. So, unfold the paperclip until you get a straight section at the end and push it into the hole located at the front of the CD-ROM drive. When you're pushing it in, try to hold it straight. You'll feel some resistance and keep going until the CD tray comes out a bit. Then you could grab it with your hand and pull it out all the way. Take a screwdriver and unscrew every single screw you can see from the outside of the device. Be sure to look under stickers and labels as they may often hide a screw. Now taking the faceplate off, it may require some prying, so identify where the plastic clips are that hold it in place. Now, try prying something else and try not to stab yourself in the process. This is the top panel, and as you can see I have pried it off. Which brings us to our first hidden gem and it's located right in here. As you can see, there are signs of magnetism. Let's pry that off and see what's inside. Something that appears to be a washer, but turns out to be a magnet. Now, which one of these is the real magnet? To find out, we're gonna do the screwdriver test. So that's not the magnet. That is the magnet, and a pretty strong one too. Now, to take the bottom cover off, I'm going to pry with a flathead screwdriver around the perimeter, especially focusing on any tabs that may be holding it in place. And there it is, the bottom cover is off. Here's a look at how the gears spin as the CD tray goes in and out. Now to remove the CD tray, I'll be prying on the sides and hooks that hold it in place. And it's out. Now just continue to remove any screws you can see. Here's another interesting part. It's made of rubber and acts as a vibration dampener. There's another one on the other side, which I'll remove using a pair of pliers. You can find a lot of uses for them, such as shocks for a toy car, end stops for mechanisms, or rubber feet for some small object. To remove this gear, there's a plastic tab that needs to be pushed in. Once you do that, it slides off easily. For the next gear, we're going to need a very small Phillips head screwdriver in order to remove the Phillips head screw that holds it in place. The rubber band can be useful. And this gear is actually a gear and a pulley in one. Just spinning the gear for fun, it's kind of satisfying, like a fidget spinner. For the next step we're gonna need a soldering iron, but before we even do that, there's something else we gotta take care of. 
There's a plastic rivet that you have to get rid of using something like a pair of wire cutters. And if that doesn't work, then you can try a pair of pliers. Snapped it right off. Onto the desoldering part. I'm going to be applying heat to the two points which hold the motor to the circuit board. Yes, the motor connections are the only thing holding the circuit board at this point. I'm prying the circuit board up with my free hand while melting the solder at the two points in an alternating pattern. And eventually it pops off. Gotta disconnect the two ribbon cables. So there's the motor, desoldered from the board. Moving on with the disassembly, there are more screws to remove. This is the assembly with the laser and the motor which spins the CD. We'll get to that later because for now we'll finish getting all the good stuff out of the plastic frame here. Just trying to figure out what's holding this white rag gear from coming out. And I suspect it's this black plastic piece over here. There it is. The rack gear is out. Now, to get this gear out, we're gonna need to pry the little plastic collar off. I'm going to be using a small flathead screwdriver to do that. The plastic collar is off. What's interesting is, under this gear, there are more gears and an intricate mechanism. And the last thing to remove from this plastic frame is the motor. To do that, we'll need that small Phillips head screwdriver again. And the motor is out. Nice little DC motor. Has a pulley at the end of its armature shaft. This is the label with the information about the motor. There's one more thing I'd like to do before moving on to the disassembly of the other stuff. And that is, reinstall the mounting screws back into the motor to keep them from getting lost. They can come in handy in the future if you need to mount the motor to something. Now to disassemble the mechanism with the laser. This is how it moves forward and back. Disassembly continues with removal of any visible screws as usual. A metal rod could come in handy. Another metal rod. This is another motor with gear mechanism. You can find applications for it as is, or further take it apart. This is a worm gear coupled with an encoder disc. Pop these rubber shocks off. And I'm pretty much done with this piece. Moving on to the laser disassembly. And as you can see, there's a strong magnet sitting in there. Now to take this thing apart.
This is the lens assembly. It's pretty easy to pry out because it sits on delicate suspension. This is one of the two strong magnets that sit in there. More on that in just a moment. That's the lens. That's the laser. Removing the second magnet. Now, as far as the magnets, I'll be honest, I had a long struggle trying to break them free from the metal brackets that they are seemingly glued to. I tried different tools and approaches, careful not to destroy the magnets. But what finally did the trick is this combination of pliers. The magnet is free. Let's see how it reacts to the pliers. Oh, that was cool. It jumped right on them. And again. I think we need to see that in slow motion. Very cool. As you can see, these are very strong magnets. Now I'll be desoldering this motor's wires from this little circuit board. The motor is free. So now let's take a look at all the useful components that I extracted from this CD-ROM drive. There were a lot of gears. There's this rubber band and motor that goes with it. The rubber shocks. The laser. The opto isolator interrupter. There's the volume adjust, which is a dual channel potentiometer, and this audio jack, which you can desolder if you need them. Another DC motor. A glass lens and the spring and the magnets starting with this one that looks like a washer so the rest of the footage is going to be me playing around with the magnets stick around if you'd like and thanks for checking out the video